All right, so we've looked at a lot of examples of how you can make um, charts with chart.js. We're really just scratching the surface, but let's talk about what you're gonna do with this. Um, and the idea is that you're gonna explore time-based data um, around the topic of climate change. So I'm not gonna go through the whole project with you. Um, you can definitely dig deeper here. But the idea is that we're going to spend some time this semester working on projects that examine complex social and political issues. Um, in part because I think visualization plays a really awesome role in explaining complicated things or helping people understand them. Um, and because it opens up this kind of connection between research, data, and art and design um, that I think is also really fertile and exciting to explore. Um, so the goal of this project is not for you to try to prove that climate change is real. This is a conversation that's been going on for hundreds of years. There's tons of research and um, really it's an accepted fact. Um, the, your goal is also not to show sort of the entirety of what climate change is and can mean for us. Um, that's impossible. It's impossible even with a bunch of graphics, let alone a single one. Instead, what I want you to do is dig in, do some research and find um, a part of this that's really interesting to you and that there's data for. Um, climate change is more than just temperature over time, though certainly that data is really interesting. Um, it has a huge range of effects. Those effects are um, also unevenly distributed around the world. Um, so uh, poor, poorer nations and people of color are gonna be disproportionately affected by climate change. Um, and we can see impacts of these things, not just on temperature and weather, but on things like the economy or um, you know, like animal behavior and all kinds of stuff. So um, you really your goal is to find some time-based data that's interesting to you, um, understand its context, and then create a really refined graphic that shows, um, shows that. Um, so the sections here include inspiration projects, and we'll look at some of those in a second. Um, resources, if you want to dig further or do more reading, including this great book by Spencer Wirt, it's available online. Really great if you want to dig super deep into the history of climate change. Um, a list of some places that you might start looking for data for this project. Um, you'll also find up at the top here links to each weekly assignment that will show you kind of the steps that you're going to go through for your project. Um, but I think a good question before we even dive into this is, um, why aren't we making maps? We think of climate change as being this um, phenomena on the earth. Maps seem like a really good way to show this. Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, maps are deeply, deeply complicated. Um, first of all, their data is in these really intense, complicated formats. Um, you'll see GIS or KML data. Um, it's, it's very tricky to kind of work with this. Um, another reason is that map making is a deeply political um, project. It's not neutral and um, power and decision making for how you display the, the earth and that data is just this like, really, really complicated topic. Um, a good example and a project that I really love is called the true size of, and um, this lets you see how um, the way we divide up the sphere and turn it into a flat shape distorts the overall size of um, countries. So we can see here the US. Um, and so what this does is it lets you pick a country and you can move it around and see, for example, how by going north or south, it's gonna get bigger. And by being closer to the equator, it gets smaller. And this is because of the projection, the way that the map gets flattened out. So for example, we can see that the US is smaller than um, Northern Africa. We can see India is, roughly the same vertical height as the US. We can see China over here, it's considerably larger than the US. Um, and that things like Greenland, when, you know, when we put China uh, kind of where it normally is in the map, it makes Greenland look really huge, but in fact, China is far, far, far bigger than that. Um, so I think this does a really cool job of showing those distortions. But what it means is that when we go to make maps, we have to make all of those decisions. Um, and it just becomes this like, halt in our process that I think it's just too hard to know where to get started. Um, that and chart.js doesn't do maps, so we would have to use a more complicated software. Um, okay, cool. So I want to show you some inspiration projects that deal with um, climate change and 
um, hopefully give you some ideas for what you might do. Um, most of these are not going to be in the format that we're looking at, like the line chart, um, but I think also that's kind of cool. It shows you a range of stuff. Um, so the first project is um, by Ed Hawkins called Show Your Stripes. And um, this shows temperature over time. So we can see here it's 1850 to 2019. And you can actually um, change some of those kind of settings, which is really cool. Um, there's also a really interesting article on this project and a bunch of knockoffs. So people doing versions of this where they leave some data out or they intentionally are being misleading about this. Um, it's really, really fascinating. Uh, next is this uh, great piece, the New York Times uh, Washington Post, a few papers do some just incredible infographics and data visualizations, and we'll be looking at a lot of those this uh, class. This is about climate risk by country. Um, now, this uses multiple visualizations in this uh, format called scrolly telling, so scrolling and storytelling um, to kind of like reveal stuff over time. But you can put in your country like this and it will zoom in and then it'll show you data about climate change risk by geography. So places like Nebraska and Kansas, probably not at very high risk for things like sea level rise, whereas the Eastern seaboard is definitely gonna be impacted by that. Um, lots more to dig into with all of these projects. Um, weirdly, the Weather Channel has this amazing project, um, United States of Climate Change, where you can put in by state and see the impact. So I'm from Minnesota, so um, I'm showing you Minnesota here. Um, but you can see it creates a bunch of infographics for each, and some of these are time-based. So this is a really cool example. This is a scatter plot. So rather than linear data, it's plotting a whole bunch of points. And then this line here is sort of fitting an average. Um, so it's kind of like creating a line chart like we did, but it's averaging it from all these data points. Lots of other stuff here, you know, again, time-based data, maps, all kinds of stuff, really cool. Uh, oops, oh no, Washington Post yelling at me that I need to sign in. Okay, well, you'll have to look into the background. Um, this is also very cool, um, two degrees C, this is um, the sort of uh, point of temperature change that scientists have been warning about. Again, this piece goes into deep detail. Sorry, you can't see it. Um, NASA, also huge in terms of creating data and publishing it and also analyzing it. So we'll see some examples from them uh, a couple of times. This is visualizing the warmest August in 136 years. So this is this kind of like animated chart shows um, uh, temperatures, yearly temperatures over time. And we can see kind of this like rise in average temperature as we get towards present day. And they do a great job, we'll talk more about this later, on adding annotations and showing where their sources come from. Another one from Earth Matters, this is a, called a checkup for carbon. Um, this is on carbon emissions. And I love these, um, again, time-based charts, but they're really clearly considering the graphics and how this is gonna communicate that information. Lots of stuff here. Um, I love, XKCD because it's a mix of like stupid cartoons and like amazing data visualizations. So this is a timeline of Earth's average temperature from 20,000 BC to present. And it's this like crazy long thing you scroll through. This is the line. So it's like a line chart going in a vertical direction. Oops. So we can see here saber tooth tigers, you know, and there's a bunch of dumb fun stuff in there too, which is pretty cool but we can see temperature going up and then this like super sharp spike. And it's that scale that really makes that spike super clear. Like we're going from um, uh, very, very, very quickly in this sort of time scale we're talking about. Um, this is a really cool project. This has nothing to do with uh, time necessarily, but this is also from NASA using satellites to um, accurately measure sea level. So if you want to know if the sea level is rising, it's really hard because you have tides and waves and stuff. So they've used these satellites. And I think these are just like super cool graphics. And they talk a little bit about how this is done. Um, this is from Bloomberg. This is um, another example of this like multiple part visualization. So this is trying to understand what is causing this warming in temperature um, and attempting to sort of debunk some of the reasons, for example, is the Earth's orbit really changing? 
Not so much. I mean, it changes, but that's not really the factor. Is the sun changing? No. So we can see it. Um, this is a great example, too, of multiple data sets. We've got our baseline of actual observed temperatures and then plotting it against these other factors. Volcanoes, all three of these combined, um, deforestation. So we can see you know, some things that are making a difference and some things that are actually not making a difference. So anyway, there's a lot here. It's a very interesting project. Um, also from NASA, this is showing sea, uh, sea level rise and how it's affecting coastlines. So this is Cape Cod. Um, the interface, it's not great here. It's pretty old school. It's like a slideshow, but it's showing a um, satellite image that's been overlaid. So you can see slowly the changing shape of the coastline as um, sea levels rise. Um, this is from the World Bank. They have a bunch of stuff. I would say it's certainly not like in the most clean or like awesome looking format. Um, but this is, for example, here is CO2 emissions over time. And um, this allows you kind of interactively to look at these time ranges and stuff like that, which is pretty sweet. Um, and you can see multiple things um, graph together so you can kind of explore and then they do a really great job here too of letting you have clear and quick access to their data um, and then lots of other stuff and I think if we scroll down we'll also see well I'm thinking of a different one anyway yeah lots of graphics um, this I think is really awesome this is from the Millikan Institute School of Public Health at George Washington University um, and I think this is a great example of a really compelling looking graphic that makes us want to dig in. So it's really different than this um, World Bank one, you know, which is just like dry and clean. Um, and this sort of like sucks me in. Now you could argue that this maybe hides information through these like visuals rather than being super clear. Um, but I think there's something really nice here showing this array of data all in one place. And then um, this really awesome project from Federica, um, I'm going to say this totally wrong, uh, Frajapan, Frajapane, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Um, uh, but she does some really beautiful infographics, again, kind of like the last one we just saw, um, showing all these different effects of climate change. So she's got some zoomed in views here. Um, I think these are really cool. And then the last thing is this great resource from, um, again, from the New York Times. These are meant for teachers who are teaching about climate change, but um, I think it's really awesome because they have this huge collection of these different graphics and you can dig in and kind of like see how they were made and understand their context a bit more. So there's lots of stuff here, things over time, especially lots of maps, but um, these also might give you ideas both for how to present the information and just for like sources to start looking for. Um, cool, so you're gonna wanna take some time and look through these examples. There's some other stuff in the images folder um, that you might wanna take a look at as well, but um, hopefully that gives you kind of a picture of what we're doing with this project. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see the cool um, visualizations you make.